Hi, this is Wendell Odom, and welcome to this version of Techie Topics. In this video, I'll discuss the concept of administrative distance and how a router uses that concept to make its choice about which route is best. Now, if a single routing protocol learns multiple routes for the same subnet, single routing protocol now, it uses the metric to choose the best route. However, when you have multiple routing sources, multiple routing protocols, the metrics don't make sense. They're different calculations. You can't really compare them. So administrative distance comes in at that point. So one of the first things you think about with administrative distance is different routing sources. The other thing is we're going to compare routes to the same subnet. Now let me be more specific. That same subnet to be subnets that are the same, it must have the exact same range of IP addresses. The best way to define that is through the subnet ID plus the subnet mask. So we're talking about same subnet means same subnet ID, same mask, as you see down here at the bottom right of the video. So let's take an example. Let's just say over on the right we've got a subnet 10.1.2.0 with a slash 24 mask. Now router R2 is going to run RIP, and he advertises a route for 10.1.2.0 down to router R1. So R1, say that's the only routing protocol it's running right now, learns that route. It's its only route. RIPs learn one route to that subnet. So RIP puts a route in the IP routing table for 10.1.2.0 with S0 as the outgoing interface and R2 as the next top router. Simple enough. Now let's put in a different routing source. We'll enable OSPF on router R3 as well as OSPF on router R1. And now OSPF advertises that same exact subnet, 10.1.2.0 slash 24. So now R1 has a choice and he can't compare metrics because it's different routing sources. So router R1 uses the administrative distance. Well, it turns out RIP's default administrative distance is 120. OSPF's is 110. And smaller is better in this case. So R1 takes that RIP route out of the routing table and changes it to an OSPF route without going interface S1 and router R3 as the next top router. Choice made on administrative distance. Another example, say we turn on EIGRP on router R4 and on router R1. EIGRP advertises a route for, you guessed it, 10.1.2.0 slash 24. The exact same subnet ID and mask so R1 now knows of three routes from three different routing sources. EIGRP's administrative distance is 90. It's smaller than the other two. Smaller is better in this case. So yes, router R1 updates its routing table yet again, gets rid of the OSPF route, changes the route to point out serial 2 with R4 as the next top router. Now you can really take this to a ridiculous degree. Let's just say we misconfigured an IP address on R1's LAN interface. Say we gave it the address 10.1.2.1 with a slash 24 mask. Yes, that would define a connected route for the same exact subnet ID of 10.1.2.0 slash 24. Connected routes have an administrative distance of zero. So we'd get rid of that EIGRP route, and R1 would now have a connected route for that subnet. Wouldn't be a terribly functional network because of the subnet overlap, but for the point of how administrative distance works, that would indeed be the logic that R1 would use to pick the best route. Now that's how administrative distance works. In the next video that I post, we'll take a look at the case when similar but different subnets are advertised. Say they're the same subnet ID, but they have different subnet masks, well, you can't use administrative distance, and they all end up in the IP routing table. So stay tuned for that one.